everyone. Welcome to tonight's live stream. I just got a message on another Facebook video and I had to respond right away because this is something that is near and dear to my heart. I'm so passionate about it. So um, it looks like um, it's, you know, it's a long handle, but looks like his name is probably James. And he commented on my safeguard dewormer for goats video. And he said, how did our ancestors do it years ago before medicines existed? There has to be a better way. And I resonate with this so much because that was me 23 years ago. 23 years ago, I thought goats, goats have existed since the beginning of time. Dewormers have only been invented in the last 10, 20 years. They don't need dewormers. And so I truly honestly thought that my goats were going to do just fine without dewormers. And I was wrong. And here's why. Um, so first of all, our ancestors learned from their parents and grandparents and great grandparents. It was passed down from one generation to another, what worked and what didn't. And one of the old bits of wisdom, there's actually a lot of bits of wisdom that got passed down through the generations. People didn't know the science behind it, but there was some good information in there. So one of the old sayings that I have seen in old books is a smart chef bird never lets the church bell ring twice on the same pasture. So they're talking about rotational grazing. you got to move your animals um, because the church bell rings every Sunday. So you don't want to let the church bell ring twice when the sheep are on the same pasture. Um, there is a saying about goats. Never let goats eat below their knees. Well, they didn't know the science, but they knew that when goats ate below their knees, they didn't do well. And that's because we now know through science that the parasite larvae are on the lower four inches or so of the grass. So you want to have goats in areas that have either very tall grass or even better browse so that they are eating leaves and bushes and baby trees and stuff because there's no worm larvae in the baby trees and the bushes. So as soon as we put up fences and we try to make our goats stay in one place, 365 days a year, you are literally making them eat from their toilet. That is not natural. And that makes sick animals. And that is why we need dewormers. And ultimately the dewormers will fail. That's why we have dewormer resistance because that's what we tried to do. You know, 23 years ago, um, well, not quite 23 years ago. I didn't have goats dying yet, but within a couple of years I had goats dying from worms and I remember after a few years, I asked a vet professor because I would take my goats to the University of Illinois. I asked one of the professors there, why do goats have so much trouble with worms? My sheep don't, my cows don't. And he said, because they're browsers and we're trying to turn them into grazers. And that is absolutely true. So I have a whole podcast episode where I talked to Tammy Gallagher, a woman in Texas who helps me answer questions. She is also a certified FOMACHA instructor, just like me. And we both learned everything the hard way. We both started looking to the science because our goats were dying from worms and nobody could help us. And so that's when we started looking at the science and ultimately both of us got certified as FOMACHA instructors because we want to be able to share that information with other people so that you don't go through the same tragedy and heartbreak that we did because nobody, honestly, nobody should have goats dying from worms now because we know better so we can do better. We have the information now to keep a watch, keep a good watch on our goats by checking their FOMACHA scores, checking their body condition and all these kind of things. We also know that our goats need to rotate pastures. So if your goats cannot rotate pastures, if it's not possible on your farm, which honestly, for most people, it is possible. They just, they think, most people think they need way too much land um, and you don't. So in our Goats 365 meetings, a lot of times we talk about how to do proper rotational grazing and people are very surprised at how little land they actually need because people think they need like an acre or two and they think they need to do permanent fencing and all this kind of stuff. They think it's going to be a lot more expensive than it really is and it's not. So getting the correct information on how to do rotational grazing is really helpful. Now, if it is determined that you truly cannot do rotational grazing, the option is a dry lot. And this is what, you know, a hundred years ago, this is what happened. 
if somebody did not have enough land that their goats were ranging across hundreds or thousands of acres, probably hundreds of acres, if they didn't have enough land that their goats were ranging across all this land or had lots of browse to eat so that they were not eating from their toilet, um, then they would have their goats all pinned up in an area so small that the goats had eaten all the grass. And so they were basically on a dry lot. And a dry lot is another good strategy for not having worm problems. So our ancestors were doing all the things that they needed to do. If they had goats, they did all the things they needed to do to keep them alive. Otherwise, they didn't have goats because Mother Nature called their herd, which is what was happening to me 20 years ago. Mother Nature called my herd because we did not have the science at that time to know what we needed to be doing. But now we do have the science and we know what we need to do. Um, and we are basically doing what our ancestors did, even though they didn't know the science behind it. So either a very small area where there's no grass whatsoever, and I mean no grass, um, or they're ranging across a lot of area. And um, back then, you know, they did it with dogs and um, things like that. They did it with dogs and shepherds and people who did move across the land so that the goats were not eating where they pooped yesterday. So this is all really important. And um, I'm so glad that James asked that question on my YouTube video about the safeguard dewormer, because you really should not be using a dewormer on more than 10% of your goats every year. If you are, there is something about your management that needs to change. So for my goats, Basically, you know, I used to have goats dying from worms um, 15 years ago. I had a lot of goats dying from worms. Today, almost none of my goats ever need a dewormer unless there's a human error in our pasture rotation schedule, um, which unfortunately usually only happens with our bucks. Or the other thing is if we have a yearling doe who gives birth because that is a massively huge ask. We are asking that doe, a yearling, keep growing, grow babies, make milk, fight parasites. That's a really big ask. So a lot of times those yearling does cannot do it. Their Fomacha score goes down, their body condition goes down, they lose weight and they need a dewormer. But senior does usually do great. Um, and also we are not putting our senior does out on pasture um, the day after they kid. So uh, sheep, I also raise sheep. The reason I did not become an expert on sheep is because they're actually way easier to raise. Um, our sheep lamb on pasture. They have no problems. Um, the goats kid in the barn and they stay in the barn for a while. And then when they go out on pasture, they are going out on pasture that has not had any sheep or goats grazing on it and pooping on it for a minimum of six months. So that means there is zero larva on that pasture. So that is how we um, are able to give almost none of our goats a dewormer anymore. Um, so I hope you have found this helpful. And um, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to post in the comment section below. James, thank you again for asking this question. I hope you found the answer helpful. And if you've got more questions, feel free to post again. Bye for now.